Your Intel Core i5 might actually be a Core i9. Kind of. See, a little while ago, somebody left a comment on my Mac Studio video talking about how Apple selling a binned 32 GPU core version of the M2 Max was just a scummy way of them being able to sell a faulty chip at top dollar. And it made me realize a couple things. A, people might not actually know what CPU binning is or how it works. And B, people will hate on Apple just because, well, it's easy to hate on Apple, even if they're doing something that the rest of the industry has been doing for decades. But today, we're just gonna focus on A. So first things first, how is a CPU actually made, or in this case, any silicon-based processing system? Well, they start life as a wafer, and this wafer is cut into individual dies, and then the edges of the wafer are moved on to recycling, and the main dies are moved on to the next stage of manufacturing. Now, looking at the dies around the edge of the wafer, it's obvious that they are not full dies and have no hope in functioning, so it makes sense to cut those away and move them to recycling. But even once you're left with the main complete dies, it's possible that some of them are not 100% functional. For example, if a wafer was meant to make eight core dies, it's possible that some of the dies coming off of it only have six functional cores instead of the intended eight. However, even with these two less cores, the remaining six cores meet all of the same performance and stability requirements of the chip with the higher core count. The term for these metrics, the metrics of how many dies come off of a single wafer and how many of those dies are fully functional, partially functional, or completely borked, is called a yield. And this yield process is something that has been in the manufacturing space for processors for literally decades. And it's a good way of seeing how good your manufacturing process is based on how many wafers come out with 100% yield, 90% yield, 80, you get the idea. And naturally, as CPUs become more complex, we get higher core counts, or in Apple's case, we get a full SOC where the CPU and GPU cores are all on one die, it becomes much harder for manufacturers to actually get a perfect yield every single time. Though interestingly, there was a time in the PC space where motherboards would actually let you turn on some of these disabled or unstable cores. Wasn't recommended, and sometimes the PCs ended up being less stable because of it, but it's just kind of wild to think that that was an option at one point. On top of that, sometimes the cores weren't even unstable or defective, they were just disabled because the yield for that batch was too good, so the manufacturer didn't have enough mid or low end product to sell. So in some cases, it isn't even about the quality of the product, it's just about making sure that you have enough product variants to go around. So with Apple now having their own SoC on the market with the M series of chips, TSMC, the company that they hired to manufacture these chips, is following the exact same tried and true practices that every other chip maker has been using for decades at this point. The only difference is that Apple is marketing these chips a little differently from other companies. Remember at the start of the video when I said that your Core i5 is actually a Core i9, kind of? Well, that is Intel's method of marketing around the binning process. They name each tier of their chips, even though they may have all started on the exact same wafer. So your Core i5 may have started life on a wafer of i9s, but due to unstable cores, it may not have met the requirements for the i9. Does this mean it's defective? No, it just means that the stable cores that you are left with get to live life as a Core i5 instead of being forced to run as an extremely unstable or defective Core i9. Okay, but what about Apple? How is their marketing different from other companies? Well, Apple just straight tells you that they're binning the chips. Like, look at the M2 Max. You have a 30-core and a 36-core GPU variant, which is obviously a result of binning. You also have this with the M2 Ultra, which is just two M2 Maxes stitched together. You have a 60-core and a 76-core option. Again, obviously binning. And the same thing applies for the M2 Pro chip. The only chip that doesn't seem to have a binned version is the basic M2 chip. Maybe TSMC got their yields to be pretty consistent with that, but I actually don't know. The point is that Apple isn't shying away from calling the difference in core count what it is. It's binning. And people might not know what that is because they've only ever seen Core i9, i7, i5, or i3, and they're not aware that those names are a result of the binning process. And they think that Apple's just selling a faulty chip at a boosted rate because Apple's a greedy company and, well, Apple's easy to hate, even though they're doing the exact same thing that every other processor manufacturer has been doing for a long time now, and Apple's just the one being uncharacteristically upfront about it. 
point is, practices haven't changed. Every Silicon Foundry has been doing this for decades at this point and will most likely continue to do this for years to come because it's the most efficient way to get multiple product SKUs out of a single process. And it's also better for the environment because you can get multiple products from a single process instead of needing to have an individual machine drawing power and taking up space for each individual product SKU. Oh, and by the way, while this video has been focusing specifically on CPUs and SOCs, this is also the process for any silicon product. So that would be GPUs, SSDs, RAM, all of that is going to use a very similar, if not the same process. So if you've watched through to this point in the video, congratulations, you know how a lot of silicon based components in a computer now get made. So yeah, next time somebody tries to tell you that a binned version of whatever Apple's latest processor is, is actually a defective chip that they're just selling at top dollar because they're a greedy company, you can let them know that if they're running anything other than a Core i9, they're in the same boat as you because, well, their Core i5 could have been a Core i9. Either way, that's been it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, and if you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a comment down below and leave a like. It's always appreciated. It actually really does help. And if you really enjoyed this content and want to see more of it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss content like this. I'm doing a couple more shorter videos, but I also still have a few long form videos planned. So hope you guys stick around for that. And aside from that, I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.